Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I want to do another video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And uh, First of all, I just want to start off uh, with a quick uh, explanation of something. Anytime you stand up for the pre-tribulation rapture on, on YouTube, you're going to get uh, a lot of comments and a lot of people trying to debate you and tell you that you're wrong and that you're misleading people and people aren't going to be prepared for the coming persecution and the tribulation and we need to be warning people they need to stock up food and all that stuff. Well, <laughs> let's just get into a few things and then i got to keep this pretty quick because i got a lot of news stories. But uh, to, uh, I was just told in, a, in, a, in, a, in some comments that uh, clouds don't mean clouds, and air doesn't mean air. And I'm here to tell all of you that God is not the author of confusion. And if you want to read the Word of God, and then not take it literally, and start trying to make everything a symbol, or allegorical, then uh, certainly you can, you can probably miss certain truths of, God, of the Scripture. And I'm, I've said this million, it seems like a million times, I'm going to say it again, that when Jesus came to earth the first time, he fulfilled all of the prophecies, literally, and to the word. Not symbolically, literally. And he's going to do the same thing with all the prophecies regarding his second coming and his, his return. And there is a rapture that is separate from the second coming. I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse uh, 15 through 18 real quick. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I believe the clouds in this phrase means clouds, and I believe the air means air, and I believe when it says caught up, it means caught up. I was told in a comment that there's no scripture that says our feet leave the earth. Well, I don't see how you can be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air without your feet leaving the earth. It is our blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is our gathering together unto Him. And let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 real quick, because this is, uh, this is, I think this and Matthew 24 are the two biggest areas where post-trib and pre-trib people just can't seem to see eye to eye. So let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 again real quick. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, that that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, that that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in, there's a key word again, them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, Beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief unto the truth. The truth. The church believed the truth. The 
true, the church is following Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. That's how you come to the Father, through Jesus Christ and Him alone. And the church understands that, and the church follows Jesus Christ. They love, they, did, they are not the people here that, are, that, that it refers to when it says, who love not the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness. And when, when they were referred to as them and they, those people cannot possibly be the same people referred to as we and you and us. They can't possibly be the same people. Yes, there is a strong delusion coming on people who loved not the truth and did not follow after Jesus Christ. And during that seven-year period of time after the church is removed, he is taken out of the way in verse 7. Then the Antichrist is revealed in verse 8. And there will be strong delusion sent to the people who rejected the truth of Jesus Christ and loved not the truth and did not follow after righteousness. Yes, they will be sent a strong delusion. The purpose of the seven-year period of time is not for God to try to trick his church. It's to reveal himself to Israel and to deal with sinful mankind and end evil forever, defeat Satan, defeat the Antichrist and the false prophet, and, and then set up the 1,000-year reign of Jesus on earth. And if you are a saint, you will come back with him for that. That's shown in, in, in Revelation chapter 19. Jude also refers to it. So does Zechariah. So, again, uh, there's a blessed hope. And it says we will be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And in, in his Father's house, which is where Jesus is now, that's where he went to prepare a place for us. And he's going to come and take us and receive us unto himself, that where he is, there we may be also. And with all we see going on in the world today, it appears that those, those days are, are truly coming here before you know it. Uh, real quickly, I also want to cover Revelation 3.10 because it, it's just another source that... It's not a confusing verse, but for some reason people just can't see this. Uh, Revelation 3.10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour, hour of temptation. You will not be here during that time period, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And again, notice the pronoun change. Because thou, thou, and thee are a lot different than them. Them are the people that dwell on the earth. They are the ones that will be here to be tried during the hour of temptation. Not the true church. All right. With that, let's get into some news stories because I, I really, like I said, what happened yesterday in Paris is pretty much uh, full steam ahead, heading right into the Daniel 70th week now. Guys, keep looking up. We're, we're going home. Oh, uh, and again, I have, I have, I will defend the pre-tribulation rapture every single day. Every single day, it's scriptural. The, for some reason, the post-trib people want to find one verse that explains it all, and you got to look at the entire Word of God, and you got to pay attention to the pronouns. And and somebody told me, well, Noah didn't leave the earth. Exactly, Noah didn't leave the earth because there it wasn't the end of time. Noah was going to repopulate the earth. Of course he didn't leave the earth, but he did leave completely the situation. He was in an ark. He was protected. He was, he was not part of the judgment. Of course, he, yes, he didn't leave the earth. It wasn't, it wasn't time for mankind to be done. He had to repopulate the earth. Uh, Fox News, Pope Francis says, by the way, and I'm not upset. I, I just feel sorry for all the people who, who are looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It says to wherefore comfort one another with these words. And I just want to, I, I want to give you comfort and help you understand that God has not appointed you to wrath. But he's appointed you to salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh, by the way, all these preppers who say they're going to you know, work, be here for the tribulation, need I remind you that Jesus Christ himself said, if I don't shorten those days, no flesh 
would be saved. They all seem to think that they're going to survive the tribulation period. And if they don't get the mark of the beast, they're probably going to be beheaded. Or be killed by a meteor or any other thing that's going to happen during the final seven year period of time. And that is not meant for the church. Okay, sorry. Let's... Pope Francis says, fundamental terrorism. Result of deviant forms of religion. This is out of Fox News today. Pope Francis on Monday denounced the religious fundamentalism that inspired the Paris massacres. Uh, and he says that the attackers were enslaved by deviant forms of religion that used God as a mere ideological pretext to, pepper, to perpetuate mass killings. Uh, he called for a unanimous response from the international community to end fundamental terrorism in the Mideast. And he called for Muslim leaders in particular to condemn extremist interpretations of their faith that seek to justify such violence. Now that all sounds well and good. The problem is Pope Francis is against any fundamental interpretation of your faith, including Christian fundamental interpretation of the Bible. He has said so on many occasions. So let's scroll down here and, and see what else it says. Francis said the Paris attacks were a result of a throwaway culture in which human beings and even God are rejected outright. Referring to the tragic slayings in Paris, France, Francis said those responsible have become enslaved by new fads in deviant forms of religion. New fads. Was the Inquisition and the Crusade, was that a new fad? There has been non-Christian uh, wars ba based on false religious beliefs all of mankind. And the Vatican had a big part in it in the past. People sometimes say how you know Christian you know they blame Christians for the for the Inquisition and the Crusades. Those were not true Christians. That was not biblical. It's not what Jesus approved of and asked for and wanted. But the Quran certainly does call for jihad, holy war, and killing the infidels. Uh, but this, this quote by Francis, just, if you guys can make sense of it, please leave it a comment, because I don't understand it. Religious fundamentalism, even before it eliminates human beings by perpetuating horrendous killings, eliminates God himself. Turning him into a mere ideological pretext, he said. Maybe I'll read that again. Religious fundamentalism, even before it eliminates human beings by perpetuating horrendous killings, eliminates God himself, turning him into a mere ideological pretext. I'm going to read it this time and leave out the part about the killing. Religious, freedom, religious fundamentalism eliminates God himself, turning him into a mere ideological pretext. I don't know about you, but when I believe that the Word of God is the absolute truth, and Jesus Christ himself is the Word of God, and if you believe that and you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you, I'm not really sure how that eliminates God himself. But I do hear Pope Francis repeatedly telling you things that are not scriptural, that are completely against the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that do eliminate God. In fact, he eliminated God from creation. He said that uh, it was the Big Bang and evolution and God doesn't have a magic wand. He can't do everything. Wake up, people. Pope Francis is very, very evil. And his, his doctrine will lead you to hell. Uh, let's go on. Pope Francis. There's another article. Is out to visit a country with a long list of papal assassination attempts. How many articles am I going to have to read about Pope Francis and possibly getting assassinated? Can you see a false flag event coming? I certainly can. Pope Francis is about to visit a country with a long history of papal assassination attempts. Um, and the, the, I'll just read the first paragraph. It says, uh, Pope Francis' visit to the Philippines this week is going to be a tense one for his Swiss Guard security detail. ISIL, which is actually known as IS now, allegedly threat... Uh, allegedly issued a threat to kill the pontiff last year around the same time that the Filipino Islamic guerrilla group 
Abu Sayyaf, Sayyaf, whatever, uh, pledged its allegiance to the Islamic extremist group's cause. And then they detail some past history of, of assassination attempts there. I just I bring that up again because uh, Revelation chapter 13. Darn, I forgot the heat again. One moment. Sorry, I get all the stuff get ready for the video, and I keep forgetting that minor detail there. All right, Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now, uh, Revelation 13, 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, everyone understands when they read that verse that that another beast is a man. It's a person. I held another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That is known as the false prophet. And we all accept that to be a person. But then people say that the deadly wound situation here was is is a kingdom. Not a person. That it was a you know a, a, a kingdom, a, a, a power that was that seemed to be no more, and they came back. But when you read Re Revelation thirteen twelve, it says, "And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell uh, therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed." The first beast and the second beast are both men. It's the it's the antichrist. And the false prophet. And yes, there is a revived Roman Empire that's going to come back. So I understand that, uh, that, that, that reasoning. But I'm looking for, and I do believe the scripture says, that there will be a false flag event, a false assassination, supposed assassination of the Antichrist. It will make it look like he's resurrected. And all the world will wander after him. And it's just interesting that they keep pointing out that Pope Francis... His, his, his security is not that great, and, and now he's heading to a place where there's a long history of papal assassination attempts, which again is very interesting with what's going on in Paris right now and the whole world, calling for the, the new one world leader, basically, and the global unity. Um, very interesting. One more Pope Francis story uh, out of Fox News. Pope's trip to Sri Lanka. Uh, that's not the one I want. Hold on a minute. Here we are. Pope Francis, uh, this is out of newsreality.com. Pope Francis, Sri Lanka visit, first stop in Asia tour. Church wants ethnic harmony between minorities. Now, I'm just going to uh, highlight a, one small area of this article. Oh, let me scroll down here. And again, I'm going to put all, the, all these links into the description box if you want to read any of them for yourself. But it says, Francis is also expected to visit Our Lady of, of Madhu on Wednesday, a church in Sri Lanka's north that had been at the front lines of the country's recent civil war. Francis will fly in by helicopter for a service that is expected to draw at least a half a million people. Uh, this is a holy shrine for all people in Sri Lanka. There is no religious difference shown. Uh, Catholics, Hindus, Buddhists, and Muslims all come here for the harmonious and peaceful atmosphere. Wake up, people. That is the one world religion. The Bible makes it very, very clear to be separate from the world. What uh, fellowship does light have with darkness? Come out of her so you do not receive of her plagues. There's a, there's a lots of places in the Bible told us to, to not be in the world and not be united with unbelievers. We need to evangelize the unbelievers. We need to tell them the truth of Jesus Christ and preach the true gospel to them, not just bring them all together as one, because that is a false, end-time world religion that Francis is, is <laughs> certainly bringing on the scene at a rapid pace now, because the whole world is wanting to, his message and following after him. All right. Well, there's so many news stories to cover every day anymore. Uh, let's go to a couple more news stories. This is some out of the Prophecy News Watch newsletter today. Uh, Muslim Brotherhood founded 50% of the mosques in the West. Muslim Brotherhood has also been part of the White House administration. 
Uh, it's interesting that Barack Hussein Obama wasn't over there for the rally yesterday. Uh, but since I believe uh, he is a Muslim, it's a tough situation for him to be in right now uh, because his he kind of supports his buddies, I do believe. Uh, Muslim Brotherhood founded 50% of the mosques in the West. The Brotherhood has established the most powerful Islamic institutions in the West, even though Muslims are not necessarily on board. A prominent Muslim leader in the United Kingdom with links to the Muslim Brotherhood estimates the half of the mosques in the West were founded by Brotherhood members. The Brotherhood presents itself as a moderate, but it supports violent jihad and is the parent organization of Hamas. That's really all that needs to be said about this article, but let me just read that again. The Muslim Brotherhood founded half the mosques in the West, and the Brotherhood presents itself as moderate, but supports violent jihad and is the parent organization of Hamas. Need I say more? Um, he says, but he, go, he, he does say, um, he was a, he, the organization admitted Muslim Brotherhood's origins and its designation as a terrorist entity by the United Arab Emirates and Israel. The Israeli government says Islamic Relief Worldwide sends millions of dollars to Hamas every year. If this is a crime to have someone as a founder, as a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, they will have to close 50% of the mosques in the West because they also had founders from this group. Um, this, uh, I'm just gonna, that's enough on that. But very, very interesting how embedded the Muslim Brotherhood is in the West and how evil that organization is. Uh, let's move on. Speaking of... Uh, Radical Islam and Terrorism. Here's another article out of Prophecy News Watch Newsletter. American Fear. It's also out of the Washington Examiner. American Fear. 74% see catastrophic terrorist attack inside the United States. Well, I do too, since we have a Muslim president and our borders, excuse me, are wide open. Um... <laughs> it says America Americans are deeply worried that a catastrophic terrorist attack by Islamic militants like the one Wednesday on Paris on a Paris magazine staff will happen in the United States. Uh, 74% of likely voter, voters said they fear terrorists affiliated with the Islamic State will strike U.S. targets if they aren't stopped. The poll was provided to secret. Okay, it's frozen right now, but I just really want to catch one more se uh, sentence. It says, worse... They believe the terrorists will use chemical or biological weapons, not just the guns used in Paris. If a chemical or biological or even a nuclear weapon is used, look out. And uh, again, let's, let's point out the fact that America is not in Bible prophecy. And America needs to fall for the one world government to rise. And uh, I think Americans fear of a big attack is certainly warranted and it's time to make sure you're ready and you're in the ark of protection of Jesus Christ to make sure you are safe because something big is coming we can all feel it um, let's move on um, here's an inter another interesting article <clears throat> this is out of uh, Yahoo News Nordic countries Point the way to cashless societies. Uh, Nordic countries are leading a shift by rich nations towards cashless societies, providing a test case for whether the lower cost and convenience of using cards and smartphones for payments outweigh the risks of fraud and some people being left behind. Interesting choice of words. Some people being left behind. But, uh, helped by wide use of computers, even among the elderly, broad trust in the state and big business, and only small black economies People in Sweden and neighboring countries are fast embracing cards, the internet, and apps for financial transactions and forsaking notes and coins. Um, EU Non-EU members, Norway and Iceland, are among the top users of cards worldwide. Um, so, we're, you know, there's more smart cards, more cards embedded with chips. You've got Apple iPay. We've got all these different ways of... Uh, 
of uh, paying. Uh, but it's it's very very apparent. Revelation chapter thirteen. Uh, verse 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And uh, people are getting the implant in their hand already. It stores Bitcoin, the RFID chip. And uh, the mark of the beast technology is being tested all around the world and will be implemented in the near future. And uh, they just... Need a few things to happen before it all takes off, and one of the main things is the church needs to leave. I will stand on that promise all day, every day. Uh, but definitely, the world is being prepared for the cashless society, and you're hearing more and more and more about uh, identity theft and, and security on the internet, and 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 with the credit cards, and ultimately, it's going to be seen as a very convenient way to do business and a very safe way. And it's going to help with identity theft and all that. And people are going to jump in line gladly to get the mark. All right, just a few more news stories here. Um, what am I looking for? Netanyahu at attacked market calls for European support against terror. This is how the Times of Israel today. We need to pray for the peace of Israel. We need to pray for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. I mean, the guy cannot win. He, all he's trying to do is stand up for his people and protect the nation of Israel. And he gets grief everywhere he goes. And it's just, it's incredible. But it says, Netanyahu at attack market calls for European support against terror. Um, it says, Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday visited the kosher supermarket and warned that attacks could grow worse. Uh, speaking to the press there, Netanyahu called on European leaders to support Israel in its own fight against terror, likely a reference to European criticism of Israel regarding its conflict with the Palestinians. A direct line leads between the attacks of extreme Islam around the world to the attack that took place here at Kosher Supermarket in the heart of Paris, he said. I expect all of the leaders with whom we marched in the streets of Paris yesterday to fight terrorism wherever it is, also when it is directed against Israel and Jews. The Prime Minister also warned that the terror threat would grow. The terror strikes that we have experienced here will grow to, dim to dimensions people do not yet understand, and this is why I hope Europe will unite. I hope it will wake up in time, he said. Israel supports Europe in its fight against terrorism, and it's time Europe supported Israel in the same fight. Um, It says, insofar as it depends on me, I will always see to it that Israel marches in the first row of nations vis-a-vis uh, -vis its security and its future. He said he was getting grief because, one, France didn't even want Benjamin Netanyahu to be there at the rally. And then he moved from the second row to the first row in a more visible spot. And, of course, the world condemned him for that, which is just amazing because four, four people down from him is Mahmoud Abbas from the PA. i got more news stories to cover with that. Uh, but he says, if the rule does not unite now against terrorism, the blows that terrorism has struck here will increase in a magnitude that can scarcely be conceived. Therefore, I hope that Europe will unite. I hope that it will also take action. And he goes on and, and, and gives a lot of other uh, great detail about that. I'll, I'll stop there but on that article. But uh, again, I say it every day and you can see it happening so clearly now that the world's call to unite against global terrorism is what's going to lead to the one world religion, one world government, and the covenant with many. Uh, but, you know, the world is still against Israel, even though they're calling for some solidarity now, and, and uh, had kind of spoke up about the fact that some Jews were killed in, the, in, that, uh, in that grocery store. Ultimately, the world is still coming against Israel in all of this. In fact, here's the next story. PMO, which is the uh, Prime Minister's Office of France, confirms France opposed Netanyahu's attendance at the rally. Unbelievable. It says, Aland called to personally invite the Prime Minister after intention to join March became clear. So in other words, they didn't want Benjamin Netanyahu to come. But when Netanyahu said he wanted to come or was planning on coming, then they called to invite him. 
Kind of like the in-laws, isn't it? But anyway, uh, the Prime Minister's office confirmed last Sunday night that France was initially opposed to the idea of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu attending Sunday's historic march in Paris, believing the Israeli leader's presence at the rally would be divisive, as described in Israel media. Um, it says, you know... <laughs> Unbelievable. It says, uh, according to Channel 2, Paris wanted to avoid any mention of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict at the rally, which was organized in a show of solidarity and a defiance after a series of terrorist attacks, uh, including those of four Jewish men. Uh, but again, it says they were actually opposed to Israel's presence there because it would be divisive. When it became clear to President, uh, French President Hollande that the Israeli Prime Minister intended to join the march, he phoned to invite Netanyahu personally. Netanyahu initially accepted the wish that he stay away and on, on Saturday cited security concerns to explain why he would not attend the event. Uh, but as we all know, he ended up going and, and is now being criticized for it. Um, and of course, all of the EU nations have been basically calling to... Uh, recognize the Palestinian state and divide the land of Israel. So, of course, they don't want him there. And, and Benjamin Netanyahu is constantly saying we need to stand up to radical, jihadist, Islamic terrorists, and Hollande and others don't really like to talk about that. Um, it's very, very interesting how this is all playing out. But the hypocrisy of blaming Benjamin Netanyahu and, and saying that he would be divisive if he was there but not, not seeming to have any worries at all about Mahmoud Abbas being there. Very strange. Uh, let's move on. Speaking of uh, terrorism and the Palestinians, just to show you that they are terrorists, uh, this is out of the Iraq Shava today. Fatah glorifies terror. One day after Abbas attends Paris rally. But again, there was no calls for Abbas not to attend, only concerns about Benjamin Netanyahu attending. It says, arch-terrorist who killed 37 civilians hailed as a hero by the PA one day after Abbas attends anti-terror rally. And so this is an article that details uh, a terrorist attack in 1978, and it says, uh, during the 1978 attack, uh, Megrabi led a group of terrorists from Lebanon to Israel where they hijacked a bus and killed 37 Israeli citizens, among them 12 children. Fatah has honored Megrabi before on more than one occasion, taking to Facebook to glorify the attack during March of this year. Um, and, uh, <laughs> let's see, and the photo was accompanied by the Fatah logo, a grenade, and guns crossed with a map of Israel as Palestine. That was to, they, they did that today. They honored that situation today, one day after marching supposedly against radical Islamic terrorism, the PA is one day later glorifying terror. Yet, they're worried about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, there's the one they're worried about attending the rally. Wake up, people. The Antichrist spirit is alive and well, and uh, the Antichrist is about to rise and take over. Um, and here's another, just a funny little article. Uh, Hamas slams a boss hypocrisy for trip. It's funny that Hamas will call it hypocrisy, but the international community won't. Um, <laughs> amazing. A uh, terror group says Palestinian president should first worry about his own people and show solidarity with them. Palestinian terror group Hamas criticized Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas on Sunday for his attendance at a Paris rally in solidarity with the victims of last week's attack. Um, keep in mind that the Hamas and, and the Palestinians formed a unity government that uh, seems to have collapsed now. Who really knows? But um, it's amazing that Hamas, the terrorist group, will call it hypocrisy for a boss to be at that rally, and the international community won't. Um, a boss wants it to seem as if he's fighting terror, but he doesn't know the meaning of terror. He thinks that acting in this way, he's earning the sympathy of ruled nations. He should first worry about his own people. <laughs> wow. 
It's sad when Hamas and other terrorist groups are speaking more truth than the news media and the international community. Wake up, people. Uh, Hamas condemns any attack that is carried out against any country, but Abbas must display solidarity with his own people. The Hamas leader charged that the Palestinian Authority, led by Abbas, was withholding salaries of Hamas employees, and anyway, we don't need to get into all that stuff. But obviously, the Muslims can't even get along with other Muslims. That's obvious, we know that. Sunni, the Shiites, they fight. Uh, all these different terrorist groups. you got to realize why it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.3 that for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them, and they shall not escape. And that's exactly where we're headed. And this call for peace and these marches with millions of people calling basically for the rise of the Antichrist in the world religions, the one world religion is going to bring on destruction. And uh, I'm just going to read the first part of Revelation 6. And I saw and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. And that's the rise of the Antichrist and a false sense of peace. And then soon after war all right um just one more quick article um again just more about the hypocrisy and and of uh the muslim nations and how this peace is not going to turn into peace uh a turkish prime minister says islamophobia deserves rally of its own at paris march Ahmad, can't say his last name, says attacks in, Paris, in France have nothing to do with Islam, slams state terrorism against Palestinians. Well, it certainly does have to do with Islam. And again, I, I'm not, not certainly not an expert on the Koran, but there are multiple verses. I, I hear something, something around 120 verses. They clearly tell you to smite them at the neck, chop their head, cut their head off, to kill the infidel, cut... Off the hands and feet off. That's what the Quran says. So, and, and, and the people who are doing the radical jihadist movement, I'm sorry, but they are Muslim. They are Islamic people. So yes, it does have to do with terror. But, but Turkey slams state terrorism against Palestinians. Wow. Turkish Prime Minister on Saturday hailed the unprecedented rally against terror in Paris as a strong message to the world, adding he would expect a similar reaction to attacks on Muslims and Islamophobia. Um, okay, when a similar attack happens, let us know. Because right now all the attacks are Muslims against Jews and Muslims against Christians and certainly Muslims against other Muslims. And quite frankly, if you guys want to kill each other, Go ahead. Um, it's <laughs> incredible. He says, It is a measure to the whole world that everyone must confront the, te the threat and terror. We should expect the same sensitivities to be shown on attacks on mosques or Islamophobia, he added. Um, he praised a comment by French President Alain that these fanatics who carried out the attacks have nothing to do with the Muslim religion as being of the utmost importance. Turkey's stance is principled and we will keep up this attitude, he said. Turkey has the same values around the world as far as terror is concerned. He added that Turkey would continue to raise its voice against terrorism of all forms, including what he described as state terrorism against the Palestinians and in Syria. Wow. Uh, and they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. Um, guys, we're living in the absolute last days. And, uh, you know, if you don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, so be it. I, I respect your opinion. Uh, and I'm going to say again to all of you that we all, all need to be prepared for anything and everything that may come our way between now and the rapture of the church for our faith in Jesus. We need to take a stand, be willing to take a stand, and be ready to die for our faith, because we could still come to that. 
But the church is not here during the final seven year period of time, which is exactly why the church is not seen in the book of Revelation sharing the gospel, preaching the gospel, which is the great commission given to us by Jesus Christ. And that's what the church has done for 2,000 years. And the church has suffered persecution for 2,000 years because it did and does and continues to evangelize the world. That's why Pastor Abedini is in prison in Iran right now. Because he, he's a, as a Christian. So, yes, persecution has happened for 2,000 years, and we'll continue to do so, and we may face it. But the church is not here during this final seven-year period of time. That's why there's 144,000 sealed servants of God from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And praise God, I believe those people are heading back to Israel right now. There are two witnesses who preach the gospel. And an angel flying through the heavens proclaiming the gospel. I believe that's Revelation yes, Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And every nation and kindred and tongue and people. If the church is here, why is there an angel flying through the heavens preaching the gospel to them that dwell on the earth? And again, that phrase, them that dwell on the earth, is very prevalent in Revelation, uh, the book of Revelation, and it never re refers to the church. In fact, it refers to the opposite of the church, which is why in Revelation 3.10 it says, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, thee, which shall come upon all of them, uh, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Church does not dwell upon the earth. During the book of Revelation days, after chapter 3, after Re Revelation 4 1, come up here and I will show you what must come take, take place after these things. And then the church is seen in the, with, the, with the crowns before the throne of God. They already have the judgment seat of Christ, they're already up there. And then the Lamb opens the seals. So, praise God, we're going home soon. Keep looking up. All the signs are. Here, things are moving really, really fast. What a great day to be alive. Very exciting. God bless everyone.